Oh no! Oh no! The brand new car! Oh no! Hello, and today I thought I would try something that nobody ever tries, which is the campaign mode. Now, that is a bit of a lie. I do actually fiddle with this a lot, and I'm doing today what I like to call the Ferrari challenge, so the name doesn't particularly matter. Hemsworth Motor Company. Well, that sounds like a good one. The first thing to do is to set this to medium. Now, that's just a baseline that makes things super simple. Then go here, set this to 100, set this to 150 million, then any of these settings, and any of these settings you could change. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, you meant to have this to set to small. That has to be set to small. Now, any of these settings, once again, and these settings can be changed to anything you want as long as this stays above two. But the idea is that you come from a racing background before the First World War kind of time, and now you've posed that, you're going to want to uh, set up a supercar factory. And I would suggest Fruinia, since if you go here, Country Chastes, they have the highest want for sportiness. In fact, I think they're the only one that wants sportiness, but you get the idea. Now, I don't want to be completely hamstrung, so I'm going to say that my company really developed a lot of top-end stuff. A little bit of bottom end, a little bit of top end, a lot of fuel. That is very important, actually. You know what, we might down that and up that. The exhaust, that's a little bit important. Now, we're going to want a little bit of chassis, a little bit of body, a lot of brakes, and a lot of tires. So, we really want to pump these through as quick as possible. In fact, yeah, we do want brakes ASAP, because brakes in this game suck to start with. You know what? That's maybe a little too much. What I also want to do is put a little bit into the entertainment, because that is very important for supercars. We have our score, it's over two, and let's start. You obviously have to create from scratch. This is just cheating. And you cannot use any loans. This is where the real difficulty comes in. So we're going to go with GT because you can just be super expensive. The challenge is you need really low engineering time. So we're going to pick a car body and turn it into a stupid car. Well, no, a GT car to start with. So GT cars like them to be big. Because this one requires a steel press add-on, we're going to go with aluminium. Then a space frame because... Actually, you know what? I don't know why I don't go lighter. But we're going to go space frame anyway. That's going to be steel front long wait I can go rear longitudinal then engineering time we really do not want solid axles but there is a lot of engineering time involved with it. so we're gonna go McPherson on the front and a coil in the back now for our first supercar engine we're gonna go with a simple old V8 now you think the push rod would be the simplest but apparently direct acting well, direct acting overhead cam is the simplest and that will actually give us a little bit more power than push rod and since this is a gt car we can charge as much as we want so we are not concerned about cost now cast iron flat plane cast and cast now hold on let's just uh analyze this a bit so our engineering time is eight where cast iron regular is 10. so that's why i've gone the class cast iron flat plane just thought i shouldn't gloss over that now cam profile, we're going to set that fairly aggressive and we're going to bring that the compression a fair chunk. Then we're going to want to two. We're going to go single because that'll keep the engineering time down. You know what? Oh, what's the engineering time difference here? It's twice as much as a single barrel. But a two barrel single carburetor is 20.49 months. Whereas a single barrel twin is only 14 months. So, I think that's the better one to go with. There's nothing here. We're going to go with race then. Uh, maybe performance. It'll keep the sound down. As you can see there, the noise reduction is considerably different. Then we're going to go with a regular leaded. Bring that ignition timing down. Put that up a little bit. For our first car, because we're going to struggle to put the power down anyway, we're going to go with cast log, and that'll allow us to update the engine with a more powerful version later with only having to do a little bit of extra work. I already seem to think that we are generating too much power and we're barely even starting. But I think we can handle 113 kilowatts. What do you guys think? Oh yeah, this is our early years V8. Ooh. Oh yeah. This car is ginormous, by the way. It's, it's such a land barge. Now I want to pick a colour that is very unique 
to this particular brand that I'm creating, and I think we're going to go with something like a Royal Purple. will be a good one for our brand. Rear wheel drive, and we're going to go a manual. Here again, we have our engineering times. I think we could deal with... Uh, we'll, we'll see what the scores are like later. Cross ply, bruh. We, we can't make the wheels any wider as they currently are. Oh, cross ply. Engineering time. We could just go premium and keep that engineering time down a lot. Low practicality penalty, body type penalty, and seat cart penalty. Having less seats in does reduce our engineering time, which currently is ginormous. That is a little over four years, which is, you know what, actually, that's not huge. But we are about to go from eight to 12. So we've added on a few months there. Now, our score is, is 77.2. It wants a coupe, but it is a coupe. We can go this coupe though, even though this coupe is four doors. <sighs> but it is also convertible, which means it can fit into another category of convertible or convertible premium. This is why I wanted good brakes. If I try to up this, you can see that the score drops, so we're not going to go with that for now. Luckily, we have an incredibly high affordability score, so we can afford to make this a lot more expensive if we need to. Now, we did start off with no safety, and I wanted to do that to show a comparison. With supercars, this isn't quite so important, but for these cars, yeah, it's quite important. We're going to jump 10, and then we're going to jump, well, that much, a little over two and a half years. We're currently up to a little over five years now. All right, handmade it is. All right, guys, let's uh, move on to making it look pretty. We are going to look at Leatherworks, but currently, how much is this gonna cost to outfit? 1.5 million compared to an extra 16 million. Ooh, I think we can afford this. Now, we're going to leave this fairly as it is. We might just reduce the automation quite a bit so then we can have this ready a little bit quicker. And that also will help us with our QA just a smidge. Need nothing else here. Moving on. And 13.8 million. Let's once again reduce this automation. So hopefully we can get this out as quick as possible. And with as little as mon money as possible. We are going to generate... 454 units per month. Now let's go over and compare it to this. 153. We're going to want to increase the size of this. Let's have a quick look-see. Compared to 254. Do we do this? An extra $63 million? Let's give it a try and fail miserably. May as well rip this band-aid off quickly. So yeah, we're going to be creating a lot more engines. I wish there was some sort of way in which you could sell engines to other companies, say like what Ferrari did for Lancia or for custom coach building companies, which still kind of existed in this time period. Now, here's the balancing act. Do we go a little bit of profit? Or since we're going GT and it doesn't really matter, we can up this price quite a substantial amount. I, uh, yeah. This is never accurate, so I just ignore that. Most of the time, it really depends. Deactivate loan. All right, we are done with the first stage of our doohickey dads. Now, I don't know what this pause is. I never understand this, and I don't know why it's there. And here to you faithful investors in our company, we present to you the, I can't actually remember what it's called, but this is the beefy trim. We hope you enjoy your stay today. If you ask the assistant over there, she'll give you all the wine and cheese that you want. Feel free to take it for a test drive. Well, since it's such a fine day in Italy, we may as well take this car out for a test drive. On today, it's maiden launch. Oh dear, did I leave this thing as a two gear? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh boy, this thing is quite sluggish off the line and then just gets wheel spin. Watch this. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, well maybe it doesn't get complete wheel spin. Okay, ignore me, fine, just do whatever you want to do. Oh, what's down here? Oh hey, look at me driving like a race car driver. Oh yeah. 
Okay. Well, it stops like an old car. <laughs> that was horrible. Oh boy. Okay. Well, this place is a lot more modern than what I thought. It just squint really hard and then it'll look like it's meant to be actually back in 1946. Well, actually, you know what? This car doesn't properly release until 1952, isn't it? Or maybe 1951, I'm not sure. But yeah, so... This is our challenge car for the first one. We're, we don't know whether we're going to go break, broke yet or not. Oh dear, I didn't even initiate that drift or even that turn. It just went on its own. Wow. Oh boy. Okay, so this thing... One wheel tire fires like crazy. I believe this is a three-speed car. But since this is a fantastic brand new car from world-renowned racing car creator, we're going to try to get this thing to a very high top speed here on these Italian Alp roads or whatever you want to call it. 125? Oh, bro. Oh, no. Oh, no. The brand new car. Oh, no. Well, this test driver has failed. <laughs> don't, don't let that uh, reflect reflect badly upon our company. We are committed to giving you the real deal when it comes to modern performance and power and... <sighs> no, really, I am trustworthy. I'm not like uh, that guy that made DMZ DeLorean, well, in about 30 years from now. And if you wonder how I know about a thing that's like 30 years from now, well... It's, it's also a time machine, and don't look at me like that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's uh, let's refresh the car and pretend that never happened. Maybe if I do a wheel spin, this thing will... Uh... Oh yeah, it gets off the line much better when you do that. This thing is a jiggly mess. But yeah, so, this is part one. I hope you guys hang around for part two. I, uh, I don't really know where else to take this car apart from maybe going and taking it to automation test track and maybe doing a lap time you know much like this except i haven't gone for the main race this is the old racetrack and well that just makes sense but that does mean that every version i create after this of new cars will have to also be raced on here so we'll make a special of event oh, special event for it each time oh dear it uh Understeers, brakes badly, then power steers out of the corner. This thing is not a high performance machine by today's standards. Though I'm guessing by yesteryear standards, this thing is probably just an absolute brute. Because, what's it, uh, got 130, I think, kilowatts or something like that? Which is actually a lot of power. That's kilowatts, by the way. Not your measly little horsepower. Oh dear. Well, we didn't hit anything. Ah, well, we did actually hit something. <laughs> okay, this time let's go considerably slower into here. Because we really want to make it to this bowl, which should be like the playground of this car. This thing should love this bowl. And it really does. Oh wow. Like, I fully powered through that. Not even a hint of oversteer. This thing is designed for bowls like that. Whereas here we're on a flat surface. Ever so slight input of the steering, and the thing just wants to go sideways. This is very much a car made on cross ply tires. Wow, this thing doesn't really like third gear much, because it just stuck at 133 and said, You know what? Now I'm done. Oh, 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 no, no, this is problematic for this car. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, I actually did pretty well there. So, it, they usually slush bucket around when going over that corner, but also breaking into it is really problematic because it's so off camber and such a weird corner. And yeah, it did pretty well. Now we've done our lap. We've done a 129.2. Wait a second. This is faster than my 80s twin turbos challenge car that I talked about in a previous video. Huh. That is actually really disheartening. <laughs> that that car did so bad in comparison to this pile. Oh my god. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'll catch you next time. And especially next time when I do another part of this. I really do hope you're there and you do enjoy it. You'd better enjoy it. <laughs>